Oh, Your Excellency, we are expecting 23, 23.4% from 40 to negotiate to Kavika 23. Na kualika kuja mpawa watu pesa. Mpawa watu pesa wende. Asante sana ndugu watuoli tafadhali tuketi na shukuru sana hamjambo nyote hamjambo tena Asante ni sana board ya Kotu executive board general secretary ndugu Francis Atuoli wa branch secretary ambao mmefika hapa siku ya leo ma shop steward ambao mko hapa siku ya leo viongozi wa wale ambao wanatuajiri FKE Jacqueline Mugo viongozi wa wizara ya leba hamjambo tena Sande njema tukiwa leo pamoja tukisherehekea siku hii ya wafanyikazi ulimwenguni. Nianze kwa kusema ya kwamba I am really very delighted to join the workers of Kenya and indeed the world at large in marking the International Labor Day. On this day, we join workers across the globe in celebrating the dignity of labor, honoring and paying tribute to your resilience, and most importantly, recognizing your critical role in our plans to build back our country stronger and better after the COVID pandemic. As we mark this occasion, we again affirm that our efforts to cushion workers against COVID-19 did offer relief to millions of Kenyan households. Many may recall that at the height of the pandemic, we took necessary action to reduce pay as you earn for the lowest workers in order to avail more income to our workers across the country. We took action to reduce VAT on many of our essential products amongst many other actions and all this aimed at trying to ensure that a global pandemic did not impact too negatively on our citizens. And today, I want to begin by thanking Brother Francis Atwoli for acting as a faithful steward and partnering with my administration in promoting the interest of workers. Our workers are the backbone of our economy. You are the backbone of our way of life. And indeed, throughout the COVID-19 disruptions that began in the year 2020, today we celebrate our, face, our first face-to-face -face celebration since the onset of COVID. And we celebrate you, our workers, who have kept the Kenyan flame burning bright. And indeed for that, as a country, we shall remain forever grateful and indebted to all of you for your genuinity and your support 
in a very difficult time. Today again we convene at a unique time in our history, a history of our region and a history of the world. Globally efforts to build our economies back after the COVID-19 pandemic have been slowed down by a myriad of events on the global scene which have put our multilateral system under undue stress. We all know that from the onset of COVID and as the world was trying to recover, new geopolitical actions have interrupted our recovery path, matters that have been well beyond the capacity of many nations, especially developing nations across the world. We as Kenya are still a young nation. In fact, as I have said repeatedly, we as Kenya are a work in progress. And like everything else under construction, a nation building is not and can never be an event. It is a process. A process that needs patience, a process that needs perspective, a process that requires sacrifice, a process that requires persistence, but above all, a process that requires and needs positive energy. Great nations across the world are built on positive energy. They are built on hope and affirmation. And you as workers are the embodiment of these pillars. I encourage you to continue powering our development by building and believing and being champions of our Kenyan dream. Leo hii tumekaa hapa wakati tunaongea ningekiangalia huko naona magari ikipita kule juu barabara za anga. Hii ni kwa sababu ya kazi yenu. Hii ni kwa sababu ya ushujaa wenu. Hii ni kwa sababu ya kuamini ya kwamba nchi yenu inaweza kutimiza mengi sio kila saa kujilaumu ama kukubali wengine wajialu wa, 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 anyway wacha nisiseme hiyo mimi nimekuja kuongea mambo mengine because kenya is still a work in progress allow me to focus on two things that i consider to be right with our country and I believe the first has to do with opportunities created by our economic transformation as a nation. A transformation that begins with ideas but ends with hard work before the fruits of prosperity are earned. And these opportunities have been exploited by those who have rejected labels that disempower them, that discourage them, and instead have been taken up by those who want to embrace truth that inspire the work of these hands that God has given us. They have resolved not to be organized by the politics of division, hatred, and baseless promises Rather, they have seized the day and thus migrated from also being earners of wage to owners of capital. I want to give example of one particular group of Juakali artisans who for a long time have operated on Gong Road, have operated in Kam uh, Kariobangi and in Kamukunji. They came together 
and have built a company that today is worth over 250 million Kenya shillings, a quarter of a billion shillings. And they have been able to do this because they believed in their own capabilities and not in difficult and empty political promises. And this is what should inspire us all, and in particular our young people. And I want to tell you how they did it. When my administration rolled out the affordable housing scheme under our Big Four agenda in 2019, a group of Juakali artisans from these areas came to see me and said that they wanted to be involved in that agenda. And we contracted them to make doors for the houses that were being built for one of our projects. And as they executed this contract, they decided to form a company that would receive their payments. And they formed Ngoko Kamaka Limited, which is a name drawn from where they used to operate along Gong Road, Kamukunji, and Kariobangi. On completing their task of building those doors just for one estate, this group of Juakali artisans bought 55 units of the houses of whose doors they were making, and in two years, they have moved from an ad hoc Juakali entity to a formal business entity which has the requisite credit worthiness to take large loans from banks. Today, this Juakali group is worth over a quarter of a billion Kenya shillings because their focus was right and their understanding of where Kenya is going was correct. There are other examples of positive energy. As many shouted and screamed at the height of the pandemic, as opposed to helping us find solutions, we came up with a Juakali initiative to take into account the many who, from no fault of their own, lost employment, and we managed to mobilize resources for the Kazim Taani initiative, an undertaking that we took as an administration to cushion our well-meaning young people from the COVID-19 pandemic. And as a result, across the country, over half a million young people managed to benefit, and some still continue to benefit from this initiative. But despite the fact that some had lost their jobs, the Kazi Mutiani Initiative allowed them to form 1,266 youth groups that were not organized by government but were organically formed by the young men and women themselves. Of these groups, 1,025 have benefited from commercial loans and our affirmative action funds. Similarly, they have established since then 2,113 new businesses that did not exist before COVID in agribusiness, in retail and services such as salons and barber shops across the country. Wa Kenya ambao walikubali na wakasema hawata shindwa na shida. Watajichukulia hatua na tukasaidiana na wao. Mambo ya kuongea matope na matusi haijengi inchi. Mupende musipende haijengi inchi. Hiyo ndiyo ukweli. This is testament that if we as a country focus on our capabilities, 
over empty political promises, then the impossible is nothing. If Juakali artisans can do and form corporations that are now worth millions of shillings in less than two years, and those who form themselves in groups under Kazim Tani are able to start small businesses across the country, I believe every Kenyan can do the same if they focus on their capabilities and exploit the positive side of what is right about our country. Indeed, another uplifting example worth mentioning on the economic front has to do with the quality of our workforce. The World Bank, Kwa sababu, sisi, we don't like looking at statistics. We like creating statistics. Kulingana ni nani anaongea, iyo ndiyo ukweli. But statistics from global organizations. The World Bank itself has indicated that Kenya will have the most productive workforce on the African continent by the year 2036 if we continue on our trajectory. And this excellence, as we have just heard, is not only just being felt in Kenya, but it is also being felt internationally. Today, we, as Kenyans, are the third largest skilled workforce of all foreign workers in the United States of America, Kenya. In Chindogo. That phenomena is replicated across the globe with Kenyans driving ICT, education, healthcare, construction, tourism and hospitality, and many other sectors in countries far away from Kenya. So today, as we recognize our Kenyan workers working here locally, I also recognize and honor our Kenyan workers in the diaspora. Today, ladies and gentlemen, they are one of our biggest resources as a country. When I took the oath of office in 2013, Kenyans in the diaspora used to remit approximately 117 billion Kenya shillings back into our economy every year. Today, our Kenyan workforce working outside the borders of Kenya remit approximately 375 billion Kenya shillings each year into our country. This colossal contribution has not been created by superheroes. It has been created by ordinary Kenyans, driven by our belief in their capabilities, driven by what is right about our country. Above all, they are experiencing individual prosperity in the countries that they work but also building a brighter future for their families back home. The second ground for positivity and belief in what is right about Kenya is that while we are faced with challenges, we have laid foundations that we require in order to overcome these challenges. In pondering these challenges, I invite you once again to view them through the lens of what is right about Kenya. There is no question, fellow Kenyans, that the cost of living throughout the globe has shot through the roof as a result first of COVID-19 and consequently as a result of the conflict that is ongoing in the Ukraine 
and Russia. But we here in Kenya have taken measures that we consider sustainable. I know people would want more, but we can only do that which is sustainable, that which we can afford to cushion the vulnerable, including workers and our farmers, especially on the cost of inputs. And today I just want to use the cost of fuel as an example. Many do not know that Kenya is one of the few countries in the world that has cushioned its population against rising prices of fuel. In fact, our fuel price of petrol, diesel, and kerosene is today amongst the lowest in our part of the continent. If we had not protected our consumers against this global increase in fuel prices, our petrol prices would have been approximately Kenya shillings today, 173 shillings per litre for petrol. But in order to cushion our people and to do so sustainably, the government has had to pay 29 shillings per litre as a subsidy in order to keep the prices at the level they are. We have similarly subsidized diesel and kerosene. Currently, our diesel pump price is Kenya shillings 125.5 a litre. Again, the lowest price of diesel in our region. And beyond this, it is secured by a government subsidy of 40.2 shillings per litre. If it was not for the subsidy, the price of diesel would today be 165.7 shillings per litre, or 25% more than the current price. What this means is that without intervention, everything transported by diesel engines would have gone up by 25%. Na hapo nitasema kwa sababu madam Mugo yuko hapa na nashukuru vile umesema ya kwamba hii ni partnership na ni partnership ya wale ambao wanaajiri ya wafanyikazi wetu na serikali lakini ni hatia kubwa sana kwa wengine kuchukua pesa kwa sababu hii pesa ya subsidy sio pesa ya uhuru ni pesa ya hawa wafanyikazi ambao wametoa kwa kodi na ikiwa wengine wenu mtatumia hii subsidy na badala ya kupatia wa Kenya mafuta mnaenda kuuza hiyo mafuta kwa bei ya juu kwa nchi nyingine tunawaona na tunawaangalia na tutawachukulia hatua kwa sababu hii ni pesa ya wa Kenya ni kodi ya wa Kenya na hamwezi kutuambia na mtuambie hatuna mafuta kwa station zetu na tunajua hiyo mafuta mnauza kwa nchi zingine nje mkitumia ati ndio mtengeneze faida huko badala ya kurudisha benefit kwa wananchi wa Kenya please tell your people it is a partnership we must work together and we need to benefit our people through our taxes and through our sweat yetu sio ya kusaidia nchi zingine yetu ni ya kusaidia wananchi wetu na hiyo ni ukweli wa mambo na mtaiaona tu Fellow Kenyans, although the cost of living has gone up because of global reasons, we must also appreciate our local solutions and the strong foundations that we have laid. And this is what I am calling positive energy. On account of the various economic stimulus packages rolled out by administration over the last two years, we have helped to cushion 
not resolve, to cushion. Because we can only do that which we as a nation can afford. And we have helped cushion our families to cope with the challenges arising from shrinking opportunities as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and other global issues that are well beyond our control. And indeed, I am proud to say that unlike the private sector that declared redundancies that led to retrenchments, we in the public sector maintained our, COVID, our, our workforce at pre-COVID levels. Hakuna mwalimu, hakuna mfanyikazi wa serikali, hakuna askari ambaye alifutwa kwa sababu ya ukosefu wa pesa. Watu wetu wote waliendelea na kazi zao bila kukatwa mishahara vile ilikuwa inaendelea katika nchi zingine. Na hiyo ni ukweli wa mambo, watu wakubali wasikate ukweli wa mambo. Wewe ulikatwa mshahara? <laughs> so in that same regard I equally call on the private sector as key partners of the state in our journey of economic development, please let us work in the same spirit, Madam Jane, uh, 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 Mogo, you've just mentioned. Let us all make readjustments that will secure the elusive balance between profitability on one hand and on the other hand sustaining the wellness of our labor force. You need them to make your profit in lean times. Let us also sacrifice a portion of our profits to keep our labor force happy. Kwa hivyo, nikija kumalizia, Nataka kusema ni nimesikia yale ambaye yametajwa na nataka niajibu mimi uandikanga kidogo kisa ingine hiyo uh -huh. na tunasema ya kwanza ndugu atuoli amesema ya kwamba wafanyikazi wa Kenya wagependa kuhakikishiwa ya kwamba ule mtu ambaye walichagua awe kwa board ya NSSF kusimamia haki ya wafanyikazi kwa sababu NSSF inasimamia pesa ya wafanyikazi na haki ya tuelekeza tuseme ya kwamba kama ni pesa ya wafanyikazi wafanyikazi pia lazima wawe na jicho wajue hiyo pesa inatumika kwa njia gani kwa hivyo waziri mimi na kuamurisha leo ha? ya kwamba hii siku kuu ndefu ambaye Mwenyezi Mungu ametupatia ikifika Wednesday mimi nataka kuona gazette notice ikiweka huyo mtu kwa kazi Agreed. na hiyo ni amri sio 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 maombi yake ilikuwa maombi yangu ni amri yeah. si namna hiyo ya pili umesema ya kwamba kwa board ya NHIF ile sheria ambayo iko imenyima wafanyikazi wa Kenya haki ya kuwa na kiti katika hiyo board wajumbe wako ndio hawa na waona na waangalia maina kamanda na muona <laughs> Namuona <laughs> e, 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 chief whip hapo 
Naona naona wengine eh hey, madam yuko hapa wa Nairobi ah dada yuko pale hebu simwameni wa mwao eh hey, muonekane haya ongea na watu yako haya ndio watu yako sheria ni yao wakipitisha mimi nitaweka kidole eh si namna hiyo kila mtu na kazi yake jameni ama ni namna gani ya tatu umesema ni mambo kuhusu SRC. Ah uh, tuoli my friend. Sasa mimi na ndugu Raila tulimenyana hapa tukazunguka nchi hii tukasema tupatieni nafasi hapa tubadilishe hii katiba kuna vipengele vipengele ingine ambaye inasumbua wa Kenya. Nyinyi wenyewe mumeangalia sisi tumetoa jasho tukitafuta wengine wamesema hawataki. Nyinyi mtajibu hiyo kwa uchaguzi ambaye inakuja. Eh, hey, hiyo ni yenu mujibu. Eh. Hey. Wale ambao wanaona mambo ni sawa, wale ambao wanaona ya kwamba tuko na katiba mzuri, lakini kuna vipengele vingine ambavyo vinatuletea shida na ni vizuri tuiangalie. Eh hey, mimi najua fikira zangu ziko wapi na vile nimejaribu lakini kwa sababu <laughs> uwezo ni wa Mwenyezi Mungu sio wangu pekee uwezo ni wenu nyinyi wa Kenya uwezo ukaenda ukachukuliwa hapo na koti na mimi nikasema sina vita na mtu mtaamua hiyo kwa ucha mtaamua vipi jameni mnataka tubadilishe hii tutengeneze ama mnatakaje Nataka kuona kwa mikono ni wangapi wanasema tunataka tutengeneze na ndio haki ipatikane. Eh. Hey. Ama ni namna gani wenzangu? Eh. Hey. Tusije tuwe watu ambao ni wadanganyifu. Na wacha niwaambieni, hakuna kitu ngumu kama wakati inchi na dunia mzima iko na shida mingi mbali mbali shida ambayo inategemea viongozi shida ambayo ina haja na viongozi kuwa wanakaa wanaketi wanajadiliana kwa sababu ya vile mambo yalivyo magumu na mimi na washukuru wa Kenya kwa sababu mambo yamekuwa magumu sio tu kwa nchi yetu covid sio wa Kenya walilete sio wa Kenya walilete ugonjwa ambao umesababisha mamilioni ya watu dunia mzima kupoteza maisha yao na mamilioni wengine wengi zaidi kupoteza kazi zao hiyo haikuwa kwa sababu ya uhuru ama mtu mwingine na wakati tumejaribu kuyawekelea na kujaribu kufanya tutafanya namna gani ndio tujiokoe Tumeanza sasa kujitokeza. Tumeanza sasa kuona barabara. Wengine wameanza vita ambaye sisi hata hatuelewi. Ambaye imesababisha bei ya mafuta, bei ya vyakula kwa nchi zingine kupanda na kutuletea shida zingine. Na badala ya viongozi kuwa wanaketi kusema tutasuluhisha namna gani jameni tutasaidiana namna gani wengine wanaenda huko kuinsight wananchi eh hey, angalia hii bei imepanda uliza uhuru yani mimi uhuru niko ukraine mimi mimi ninafanya nini huko jameni eh? mimi covid nilikuwa huko kulea kutoa mimi badala ya kuja kunisaidia kuniambia niko na mawaidha hii na njia hii na njia hii njia ambayo tunaweza tuokoe watu yetu wakati tunagojea mambo haya yaishe wewe huko kwa soko na matusi na wewe unajiita kiongozi na una, unajiita ati wewe ndio sijui namba ngapi katika nchi ya Kenya eh uko wapi badala ya kunisaidia kuondoa hiyo shida wewe uko kwa soko kusema ulizeni ule 
basi si ungewacha uniwachie mimi nitavute mtu ambaye angenisaidia jameni eh? Tuambiane ukweli jameni mimi wakati unafika lazima watu waambiane ukweli eh? wewe unajua hii shida sio ya mtu hii ni shida ya u- uko wapi wakati mimi nakuhitaji eh na ndio mimi nashukuru huyo mzee huyo mzee at least hata kama alikuwa na mambo yake alikuja kunisaidia eh na hiyo ndiyo ukweli wa mambo na alijua hii sio shida ya mtu ni shida ya inchi ni shida ya ulimwengu tutasaidiana njia gani ndio tuokoe wananchi wetu matusi ndio nawaambia and empty promises take you nowhere but hard work the labor of your hands na hiyo ndiyo Mwenyezi Mungu alitufundisha na hapo ndipo tulipo kwa hivyo wa Kenya wenzangu recognizing because of all these challenges that we have not had a review of the minimum wage over the last three years further acknowledging the increased cost of living with inflation currently hovering between 5 and 6% annually in that regard and in full appreciation of the critical contribution that our Kenyan workers have made to our economy during that very difficult time as a caring government we find there is a compelling case to review the minimum wages so as to cushion our workers against further erosion of their purchasing power while also guaranteeing the competitiveness of our economy and in that context i today declare an increase of the minimum wage by 12 percentage points With effect <laughs> With effect from the 1st of May 2022 yani leo And finally fellow Kenyans let me take this opportunity to thank our ministry to thank kotu and our stakeholders and at the same time congratulate the honorable gilbert hugbo former prime minister of togo on being elected the first african director general of the international labor organization through our ministries of labor foreign affairs and through our organization kotu kenya was at the forefront in lobbying for this appointment and it is indeed my earnest desire that he will work towards placing our african labor movements on the global map i wish you all viongozi mukirudi kwa wafanyikazi wenzenu muambie a happy labor day shukurani nyingi kwetu sisi zote kwa wao kwa vile wamejitolea miaka hiyo ya ugumu na hakikisho ya kwamba tutaendelea kusaidiana pamoja kuhakikisha tumeimarisha uchumi wetu wa nchi yetu god bless you all na Mungu aibariki na ailinde Kenya. Asante ni sana. Asante.
Asante sana Mheshimiwa Uhuru Kenyatta Rais wetu wa Jamhuri ya Kenya na Amiri Jeshi Mkuu wa Majeshi ya Ulinzi. Ni hongera kwa kuweka miundo msingi na hata mazingira bora ili wafanyakazi wetu waweze kuendelea. Nitaomba sote sasa tusimame wima walio na kofia ambazo si rasmi tuweze kuzitoa. Ili tumalize kwa wimbo wa taifa wa Jamhuri ya Kenya tunapomaliza sherehe ya leo. Tukiongozwa na bendi yetu ya askari wetu wa utawala na kwaya za muungano. Wimbo wa taifa. Shukrani za thati na niombe viongozi wetu kwenye jukwaa rasmi tuwe watulivu anapoondoka mheshimiwa rais. Tutulie tafadhali tutulie tafadhali tumpe nafasi mheshimiwa rais kuondoka bendi wakiendelea na mziki. Tafadhali wale wako kwenye jukwaa tutulie tafadhali tumpe nafasi mheshimiwa rais kuondoka.